As U.S. voters cast their ballots, many candidates of African descent are running for elected office. And joining me now is one such candidate, Adeoye Oye Owolewa, a Nigerian-American and current U.S. shadow representative for the District of Columbia. Oye, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you for having me. It's always good seeing you. Now look, you are already the current U.S. representative for D.C. And so you're running for a second term. What do you hope to do that you didn't do in this first term that you're already holding? Thank you for that question. In my second term, we hope to build off of the work we've done. We have raised the, and amplified the case for D.C. state, not only in D.C. or even in the United States, but also in African countries as well. We've also successfully introduced a D.C. statehood resolution in West Virginia and hope to amplify and repeat those efforts in other states as well. You know, for a long time, Oye, you have advocated for the uh, statehood of the District of Columbia. A lot of people just know D.C., D.C., but it's not a state. Right. Why would you advocate for this, and what would it mean if D.C. became a state? Yeah, D.C. state is critical because not only do we get to finally have representation on laws that we're taxed to pay for, we're also able to control many things in D.C. that we currently don't have. Number one, we don't have full control of our law making system. We don't have control of our criminal justice. And we don't even have control of our budget. So this allows us to have full control over our lives. So who does have that control over the District of Columbia? Right now, the federal government controls everything. We have a president that's the chief of our National Guard. So whether it's COVID response or even what happened on January 6th, DC residents were unable to control our own safety. What other issues are the voters most concerned about in your constituency? We care about a lot of things. We care about free and fair elections. We care about representation. We also care about how our schools are going to be. And in this office, we're not only just talking the talk, we're walking it too. So we collaborate with a lot of partners to make sure we give as much value to our residents as possible. What I hear most here in the districts of Columbia after the pandemic is people looking for jobs, people desperate for jobs. What is your plan to get people to work? here in D.C.? That's a great question. We collaborate with a lot of groups like the Destiny Treasure of All Nations. We collaborate with Chambers of Commerce, not only to give people the information, but also opportunities to not only work, but also get grants for their businesses as well. There are a lot of African and minority-owned and women-owned businesses that often aren't represented when it comes to getting those grants and funding to stay afloat. You saw uh, we had somebody, uh, a reporter in Zambia, talking about the process and people weighing in on what the U.S. election is all about. But what is innate for Africa when a person of African descent gets elected into office here in the U.S.? That's a great question. It creates hope. It gives people an opportunity, especially young people. We collaborate with organizations like NAPAC, the Nigerian American Public Affairs Committee, to really t find folks from the diaspora to run for office. We're also collaborating with organizations in Africa, like Yaga Africa, to really empower young people to not only see themselves as change leaders, but also run and win elections.